Great. And up next, let's take a breather and let's discuss multiple approaches, how we can access props in the component. And um, before we continue, let me just make something extremely clear. There is no right or wrong. Again, I know you're probably sick of me saying this, but it really comes down to your preference. The reason why I'm showing multiple approaches, because I want you to be aware, just in case you see that in someone else's code. Also in this video, we will highly, highly, highly lean on the, the structuring concept in vanilla JS. And if you're not familiar with the concept, or if you see a feature during the video that maybe is new to you, I suggest watching this video, the JS Nuggets playlist on my YouTube channel, and the link is over here. And in there we cover everything in vanilla JS setup and in more detail. And in short, the structuring in vanilla JS just allows us to pull out the properties so we don't need to reference the object anymore. And in the long run, it just saves us time. As far as the example, again, if you want to copy and paste, you can definitely do so. You can set it up in the index.js, but I'm just going to show you here in the readme that if we have an object with some kind of properties, instead of doing this, so the object name and then the property, we can just pull them out. So that's the, the structuring we need to reference, of course, the main object. And here we go with whatever properties we want to pull out. And then in rest of the code, we just need to reference these two. So we don't have to go anymore with the sum object and then dot name. And in our case, it just allows us to do this, where we have the props object. And instead of going props dot, props dot, props dot, we can simply go with props, pull out the properties that we know exist over there. Again, let me repeat one more time. You cannot magically access the prop if it's not there. So if you don't provide when you set up the component, it's not going to be there. Hopefully that is clear. And essentially then we can just go with the property name. So let's try it out. Let me navigate here. I know that I'll access over there three props. So object with three properties, image, title, and author. And that is equal to a props object. So what do we need to do? Well, now we just need to remove all the prop instances. That's it. Let's save. And if everything is correct, the result is going to be exactly the same. The difference, well, we need to type less. We just reference these properties once and we're good to go. Now, alternatively, and this is something that I do discuss in the video. So again, if this is new to you, I strongly suggest referencing that video. We can also destructure in function parameters. So in our case, that's the props object. Now, keep in mind though, once we do that, if you'll try to console log props, it's not going to be defined. So what am I talking about? Well, this is a function, right? And at the moment we have props parameter. Now, since it's an object, we destructure it inside of the function body. Instead, I'm going to say, all right, I know that the object is going to be there. And I right away want to pull these properties out. Again, properties need to match exactly and everything, but essentially we don't need to add this line of code. We can do directly here in the function parameters. Let's remove this, let's save and check it out. Again, everything still works. And like I mentioned in the beginning of the video, it really comes down to your preference. You'll see some people who use this type of setup and you'll see some that implement this one. And it really comes down to what is your preference? Which code makes the most sense to you? At the end of the day, they deliver the exact same result. Instead of using props dot props dot props dot, we just grab the prop and set it up in our JSX.